Today I'm going to talk to you about the four key business assets that a business is concerned about when deploying a blockchain. The four key business assets are data, access, contracts, and technology. Now those four are critical because businesses need to have access to their data. They have to have access that is particular to their data only and not allowing others to access their data. They need to have access to the contracts or the smart contracts that are in the blockchain that control the business processes that are being executed by the blockchain. And they need to be able to understand the technology and work with the technology provider to embellish or increase or uh, add new features to the blockchain as, as time um, permits and as business rules change. So I'm going to go into each one of these in depth. And so first I want to talk about data. Now data is the first critical asset a company owns because Without data, it, it isn't in business. In fact, without data, it's about its products and services, it can't survive. And the bottom line is if that data is compromised, it can lead to its competitors, basically putting them out of business. So data is a critical, critical item. And every business that gets involved in a blockchain is going to be first concerned about the data that they put in and that's proprietary to their business. So when Walmart joined the Food Trust blockchain by IBM, along with No Seafood and Golden State Foods, to name just three participants in that large blockchain, they were concerned that its business proprietary data would be compromised. And of course, the way that you deal with that, I'll show you, in the upcoming slides. So here we have a situation where Trade Lens was implemented by Maersk and that happened in 2018 in December. Now when Maersk deployed the database, one of the famous stories that comes out of this is that Hoppe Gloyd, their major competitor in the shipping industry, would have no just no part of it at all. They really drug their feet saying there's no way we're going to get into the same computing system with Maersk, their major competitor. Their main concern was their data. They're not going to have Maersk control the data. So, you know, along comes 2019, Maersk and IBM are able to convince four of the largest, uh, other largest carriers in the world to join. Then comes 2020 and CMA and Mediterranean Shipping Company join. And those companies now that two years have transpired are in finally enough to convince Hoppe Lloyd by June of 2021 that they ought to go ahead and become part of this large consortium. Currently, 16 of the top shippers in the world are part of the Trade Lens blockchain. And what that means is data security really has been handled. Maersk doesn't contain it as a centralized repository. It is now distributed among several different companies. The consensus algorithms and the encryption now keep the data secure and distributed so that it can't be tampered with. So Hoppe Gloyd is now willing to be part of this huge blockchain that does over a million transactions a day currently. So let's talk a little bit about access. You know, access is basically two ways. There's permissioned access, and that's what businesses are familiar with most. Uh, even within companies, uh, businesses control the data based on what company role you play within the company. You know, finance people have certain access, procurement people have certain access to data, and it's based on the role that they play within the company. Well. It, it's not different when you get into a blockchain situation where now you've got company roles. You've got companies that do shipping. 
you've got companies that do receiving and you've got entities that uh, receive the, the goods into ports and go through customs and if various companies play various different roles in the process. And now a permission blockchain on the business level will have permission based on those particular roles. So the other side of the coin is a permissionless blockchain. Now, a lot of, a, a lot of people who are not f really well familiar with blockchain will believe, uh, as the purists would, that the only kind of blockchain is a permissionless blockchain one that's completely distributed and completely open. Uh, anyone can create a wallet and has access to the data. Well, that just doesn't work in a business context because even if the identities of the individuals are masked, such as with a permissionless blockchain, such as Bitcoin, where all you see is a wallet address and you don't know who's behind that wallet address, even at that level, there's people who can dig into the data and finally put enough pieces together to figure out what's going on and who the players are. So a permissioned blockchain really is the only way to go uh, when you're talking about large business. So the next we come to is contracts. Now contracts are smart contracts. They run the business process within the blockchain and they're a core part of, of the blockchain code. The whole reason the blockchain exists is to help benefit the business by running processes without the intermediaries that had to be involved before. Um, in the trade lens example, uh, the trade lens database takes care of a lot of that paperwork shuffle that used to exist where reams of paper had to be delivered to the various places. Now, if you had a, a container cargo ship that had a thousand containers on it, you can imagine in a paper type of situation, the kind of burden that that would place upon the shippers to make sure all of those bills of lading and all of the um, inventory of the contents of the various uh, containers and who was shipping the container and who's contracted and on and on, all of that information being on paper would have been a, a nightmare as we've grown in our shipping uh, over the past uh, several decades. So the contracts manage a lot of that and get rid of a lot of those intermediaries. Uh, but the challenge here is that the people that are part of the blockchain don't necessarily want that code tampered with. So the access to that code is important. The core code needs to also be distributed among several different nodes so that one particular player can't just go in and decide to tweak some of those rules uh, to their own benefit. So by distributing it and making sure that it's that it also is part of the consensus protocol, it prevents fraud or reduces fraud and unauthorized tampering. That way the consortium can get together and decide amongst themselves what changes need to be made, what uh, embellishments or updates need to be made to that core code and then deploy it in an orderly fashion. So the next is the technology. As you can imagine with business budgets on the line, that there are a lot of companies that would like to get their piece of that business budget. They want to evolve along with the companies. They want to help the companies to deploy their blockchains. And of course they want to get paid to do it. So there's a lot of competitors in the market and a lot of the big names are, are involved, such as IBM, Oracle, and SAP, uh, that all use the Hyperledger fa fabric as their foundation. And then Microsoft, who tends to be developing for the uh, more the off-chain type of uh, developments. So when you go look at, at, at Microsoft, you're, you're not really seeing any big names of companies that they've supported there yet. There are also smaller names or lesser names in the in the business, such as Leeway Hertz, Intellectsoft, Unixsoft, Innovex, and Altoros. They do uh, a lot of significant medium-sized business contacts, helping more medium-sized businesses uh, deploy blockchains. They are specialized. They're more nimble than an IBM and an Oracle, uh, have less overhead, and a lot of times can handle um, 
small business to medium business deployments a lot easier than the big names could. What we have is the four key assets that a company is going to be concerned about when they deploy their blockchains. They're going to be concerned about their data, access to their data by themselves and by others, the contracts that manage the business processes, and the technology that's running the, the whole blockchain. They're going to be concerned about being able to update. They're going to be concerned about being able to move forward and have the blockchain grow with each of their businesses. So that's the four key items that a business is going to be concerned about or key assets that a business is going to be concerned about. So thank you. If you like what you see here, please hit that like button and uh, help us to grow the channel and uh, subscribe if you would. Thanks.